What's up, everybody? It is I, Sigma, and we are back with episode 62 of the BBET Games Cast. I am joined by Mr. Gamer. Hello there. As well as Blue Bones. It's your boy. What's going on, everybody? And Superman Jeff is away. He's spending time with his son, as he tends to do every other week or so. But, as we always do, we're going to go ahead and start with what we've been playing slash watching for the week. Uh, my list is pretty short this week, so I don't mind going first. Uh, first up, I played a game called Hellpoint. Have either of you guys heard of it? No. No, yeah, it's a pretty obscure release, I think. Yeah, nope. But um, <laughs> in some circles, it was kind of anticipated because it's yet another Dark Souls clone. Um, oh, you were playing that on the Escapist? Yes, I was playing stream it on uh, the yeah. post 3MR uh, stream for Escapist. Uh, my colleague Jesse actually reviewed that game for 3 Minute Reviews. Um, so I had him on as my guest, and I played through it while he kind of talked more in depth about, you know, what his thoughts were as I kind of formed my own. And mm-hmm. the thing is, it's not a bad Souls-like, but it's literally Souls. Like, that's kind of how Jesse described it. Like, it feels kind of like a copy-pasted thing. Like, the world design is unique in and of itself, but it's also, mm-hmm. at the same time, uninteresting. Like, the, the biggest set pieces are like maybe a couple areas and then the majority of your playthrough are just very samey metallic walls and floors and whatnot um Mm. the enemy designs are kind of cool and the moment to moment combat is all right but the boss fights which are supposed to be you know some of the highlights of like any souls game are completely lifeless like it was oh really yeah like enemies will do like the very same attack like maybe three that well overall they'll have like maybe three or four attacks max and then they'll do the same yeah. attack like over and over and over again. So you can easily just kind of move out of the way and get your one or two hits in because that's all they allow for and then back off. So it's just not fun. Like the boss fights kind of grind any enjoyment to a halt, honestly. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Uh, one one good thing about it, though, uh, is uh, if, if you played a, a Souls game, you know the platforming is something that they throw in there, but the game doesn't really feel built for it. <laughs> No, right, not at right. all. If, if anything, it's easily exploitable. Right. But in Hellpoint, um, they actually do a better job of making your character feel like they can make weird jumps like that. And they have platforming puzzles that are kind of interspersed within the level design. So you can find secrets and stuff by climbing ladders and jumping through little maze-like puzzles and stuff. So that stuff was actually a lot more fun in terms of platforming in a Souls-like game than any other Souls-like I've played. So, I mean, that's a highlight. But honestly, people don't play Souls likes for the platforming. So overall, no. yeah, it was kind of a, it was an okay game. Like if you really love that genre, like you really don't want to play much of anything else. Like it's a solid entry for sure. But just be wary right. that, you know, those boss experiences probably aren't going to do it for you. But okay. um, other than that, um, I played more Battletoads with Starboy. That was also on stream. Uh, we did a Sigmund mm-hmm. sign yeah, uh, this past that? Wednesday. Um. I inadvertently left the game on the hardest difficulty because that's how I ended it um, when I was playing it for the other post 3MR, my first one. So it was me and Starboy, and we just happened to be playing on the hardest difficulty. So um, we actually did a lot better than I thought we would because, you know, he was kind of holding his own. He was listening to some of my direction. And the way the the multiplayer works is since there are three Battletoads and only two of us playing... Whoever dies kind of swaps out with the other one. So Starboy always kind of had an extra life. Two lives, yeah. And in some of the other situations, like with mini games and whatnot, that um, are a lot more like Twitch happy, I could mm-hmm. sometimes tell him, "Hey, don't use the other life because I'm going to need it when I inevitably die." <laughs> so like that kind of that kind of helped us out. But overall, it was actually fun. It was more fun than I thought it would be. Uh, playing that game for the third time <laughs> but you know playing it with friends definitely helps and that was that was part of what i liked so much about it when i reviewed it because I, I got to play it with my two other colleagues and it's it gets really hectic in some of those mini games when everyone's kind of scrambling around and somebody keeps messing up and you're yelling at each other like it, it can turn into mm-hmm. a kind of a party game atmosphere so that was actually really fun okay and last on my list uh, i know you guys were all playing this free for all friday but hot shots racing is what i couldn't talk about yep. last week um, it's my most recent review uh, for Three Minute Reviews, and I absolutely loved that game. It is such a good feeling racing game, like an arcade racing game. Like I know people yeah, love uh, their Forza. Arcade racing is 
Speed. Yes. Like, I really Specific missed it. Genre and you can feel it, yeah. Like, Need for Speed used to be my go-to for that, but they've kind of not been doing much of anything for a really long time now. So it's nice that this kind of tiny alternative this, from this indie studio, Lucky Mountain Games, uh, kind of hit the scene. Because, like, the, the aesthetic is really cool looking. Like, you know, super bright colors, polygonal in nature, but everything still looks nice. Like, it's not like, uh, yeah. like Star Fox blocky, if you get what mm -hmm. I mean. It's... Everything holds a, a decent enough shape, especially for a being a, for it being a car. Uh, the tracks are right. nice; they're interesting look locations and whatnot. And just overall, the racing just feels so good. Like you guys can attest to this, I'm sure. Oh yeah, and yeah. We had a really good time on Free From Friday. Love that game. <laughs> it it definitely has a um, learning curve, though. We've had some friends who aren't necessarily adept to racing games try it, and they're like, "Nope, this isn't for me," because <laughs> it's definitely. Like, you either get past that checkpoint in time or not. And you can play the game or not, you know? So it's... it's um, I liked it, but if I didn't play racing games on a regular basis, I can understand why I just drop it immediately. I, I had a couple friends do that, so... I guess, yeah. Some people it, just don't like racing games, period. Because that's... Not just that. The fact that it doesn't let you finish if you don't get to a certain point in a certain time. But you, while that's, we enjoy that's that... That's the arcade style, that. though. <laughs> I understand that, yeah. But it's not friendly to people that are learning to play it. Because then they only get one or two checkpoints, and then they get kicked out of the game. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, that we understand that's the challenge, that's the risk that you take. Um, but I, I, it's not new person friendly. Um, but just like you said, for what it is, it, it's amazing. It's, it's great. It's fun. Yeah, so I, I had a ton of fun with that. Um... I may I may stream more of it either on my own or again with Escapist, um, and just try to mess around with those time trials because I honestly like of all the fun we had uh, playing against each other on Friday, yeah. I still think that the time trial stuff is like the most fun in that game, like just constantly trying your your hardest to like beat a ghost that's like just constantly out of your reach, like it. When you actually do it, like it's it's like a Dark Souls victory. It's like, oh, I finally did this thing. Like it's it's amazing. Uh, I just mm. the only thing I wish, and I did mention it in the interview, is that they did what um, I think either Need for Speed or some some other older arcade racing games started to do is where they pit your friends against you, like the ghosts and the time trial stuff. It's oh, like a friend's, friends leaderboard. Yeah, so you're always going against people you know and not just the entire world because some of those guys can probably be way out of your league and it's you just have no chance you know what i mean but if it's somebody you know you're even more incentivized to try and actually stick with it and you know take them down so that's pretty much it for me um wasn't really watching anything new so uh i'll go ahead and defer to one of you guys for what you've been playing slash watching all right so that have me up next so i have finally completed shante and the seven sirens oh and... that was a while ago you started that right well, yes, I started it and then insert distractions here. Um, yep. Finally finished it, and it is everything I wanted and more. I, I couldn't. I, the only reason, the only way that would make me that the only reason I would love this game even more is if they did what they did with uh, Shantae. Half genie, uh, half genie hero, where mm -hmm. there was different modes, and you played as Bolo, Sky, and Roddy Tops. Um, and for those who aren't familiar, um, these three are Shantae's friends that help her protect Sequin Land, which is where she is originally from. She is the guardian genie of uh, Sequin Land, and she gets into hijinks like any other half genie hero course, would. Right normally get into exactly. um there uh risky boots came back in this which is like i would say risky boots is kind of the uh the dick dastardly protagonist like he always seems to get power but he will eventually fail um so they they did that really well um i had a bit of a um heart and throat moment because I was just going through my old Twitter and I was like, oh yeah, way forward like this. And I had to do a double take, like, wait, way forward, like, wow, Senpai noticed me. Uh wow. <laughs> um 
Now, hopefully, maybe if I pray really hard and I click my heels twice, Shantae will be in Smash because then that'll be the only character I play. That will be the only <laughs> character I play. I'm sorry, Isabel. I'm sorry, Little Mac. I'm sorry, Min Min. Shantae. Like, it's that, that would be at that. I, um, uh, you know, going through our various social media circles, I saw somebody talking about, um, 2B for Smash, and I was like, that's actually a pretty good idea. I, I don't think it'll in my happen. Opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen calls for that, I'm not too. talking about the probability. <laughs> I'm talking about, is it a good fit? I think so. My Here's my only, my only criticism. I don't want another sword character in Smash. We're probably going to get some more, though. It's going to happen, bro. <laughs> like, there's, like, what, how many slots yeah. left? Like, five before the second <laughs> DLC pass is done? There's going to be some swords. I know, but it's like, we have so many. <laughs> like, but yes, um, but that goes to uh, what I was playing. Um, because of because of the creative process I have to get into with D&D, um, I am playing a lot of Minecraft because it just helps me think. Okay, uh, It's strange, but playing Minecraft and I'm playing survival mode. So this is like, I'm trying to beat the Ender Dragon and <laughs> I got to give credit to Minecraft speedrunners that can do this in like an hour and 30 minutes. Cause I'm here getting killed on day three by a skeleton, just pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and, and then you're dead. Cause you have no armor, no nothing. So there's that. Um, unfortunately I wasn't, really watching a whole lot of anything. I've just kind of been in, like, a creative mode, so not really sitting down to watch anything, so that'll be it for me. All right. How about you, Blue? Oh, man. Um, so, let's see. This week, I've been doing... Um, I've been trying to catch up in Final Fantasy XIV, and... Um, but in my attempt to do that, I was inspired. So, this, this is a little story, right? It's mm-hmm. happened to... Um, what I've been listening, actually. Um, occasionally, and I, I told Gamer this story last night, but occasionally I listen to top um, songs, top tracks on Spotify for different countries. And I found this one song um, from this Japanese artist. I think the name is... Uh, crap, and I should have written it down. I knew <laughs> I was going to tell this story. His name is Kenshi Yonezu, right? Mm-hmm. Kenshi Yonezu. And um, he's got this really dope song that I was listening to. It was, uh, it's like number three in Japan right now. Um, I can't even try and pronounce the name. And I'll, I'll drop a link if y'all really need it. But <laughs> no, I kind of want to hear I'm it now. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to send it to you. So um, I sent the track to my brother and because we, we share music all the time. And he's like, yo, this is super dope. Let me listen to He said, did you listen to some of his other stuff? And I was like, you know, I really didn't. So I uh, go on Spotify and listen to his second most popular song, because that, that one was the first, it was the second. The second most popular song is the My Hero Academia intro, like season two. Oh, and I, is yo. that the one that goes, oh, oh, yes, yes that yes. song is dope. <laughs> that That's song is dope. <laughs> so let me tell you how amazing it was when I realized that I like this artist before I like this artist. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> So what does this have to do with Final Fantasy XIV, right? <laughs> While I'm listening to this and figuring all this out, my homeboy, he posts, um, his name is um, Yojimbo FFXIV on Instagram. He posts um, comics and stories from Final Fantasy screenshots. And his, his stories are really good. He's got like 20-something chapters on one character and like 13 on another. And he's putting together this whole kind of universe. I was looking at his latest post. I'm like, yo, this is super cool. I'm listening to the song. And I'm like, wait, hold on. I do a lot of video editing. I can do some in-game captures. Let's start making a little music video off of this. So I have, I have, I'm starting to put together this now. And I, I did a little sample, showed it to the folks in um, Final Fantasy Discord, and they're like, oh yeah, let's jump on board. There's a lot of people jumped online, and we got a lot of footage. And I'm still working through this. I cannot wait to finish this video. It's it nice cool. to do. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to do work for fun and pleasure again. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, definitely. Sometimes you need like those little pet projects to kind of yes remind you why you're doing this kind of stuff. Because oftentimes you're doing it for other people, and all the creativity feels kind of sucked out of you. One hundred percent, my feelings yep. right there. Yep, yep. 
<clears throat> so um, that was a really revitalizing project that I did and or that I'm working on and um, is it's been like taking over my brain. But uh, uh, yeah, as as far as that, I've been playing Final Fantasy for that purpose recently. Um, it's coming out really cool. I can't wait to share with everybody. On top of that, uh, just like Sigma said, Hot Shot Racing was super dope on Free For All Friday. Um, I've been playing a little... Now, I know you're... It's funny. I just got off of Smash when you went live last night. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I went on right <laughs> after uh, playing Golf of Friends with uh, the Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo. and yeah. Night Shadow. And Joker joined That's us right. on chat, I think, but he wasn't playing in the game, so that... That was a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I've been working on my Bowser. I think it's a little bit better than it used to be. Um, and I'm talking about, like, over the last couple of weeks, I feel like I feel like I'm improving. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Super Smash Sundays is today. So, yeah, you, you know, that's it what it's all about. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I got some um, I got some folks who are supposed to be coming through this weekend who haven't played in a while. And so I'm pretty excited about that. So, yeah, I hopped on the sticks for that. Uh, Spellbreak has been fun, but All right. my PS4 is acting funky, so I'm gonna have to see uh, see what's going on with that. What, but um, what's it doing? Is it is it doing a thing that people say where it sounds really bad, like it's the fans are going crazy? Mm, not necessarily. It's like turning on and then turning off. I'm just like, why? So, but the thing is, I have this new like, and I'm not gonna go too far into it on the podcast, but. <laughs> I have this like HDMI switch and my capture card, like everything's all plugged up together. Uh huh. Um, going straight into the screen, and it might just be the HDMI cable itself, because whenever I look at my uh, my capture utility, is gives me the HDCP thing. Anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. This is like <laughs> the troubleshooting I've been doing this week. But I, I like uh, yeah. Spellbreak. We can talk about that later, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like Spellbreak a lot. Um, I started off as like a rock main, and I kind of slowly i wanted to do something different i did toxicology and i am like i can't stop playing it now um i did some training in the the lightning um field to get extra charges on my runes so now what i do is i play an invisible build on toxicology where i can use the invisibility rune twice in a row i only show up when i want to as long as i'm inside the circle you're not gonna see me unless i want to be seen it's so let me go. Let me ask this question. So when you build yeah. up like those passive bonuses for the other mm -hmm. abilities, they stay with the character yeah. even if they're not wearing the <clears throat> gauntlet? Or how does that work? That's correct. Yeah. No, you earned it. So Wow. Okay. I, I did not trained know that. in lightning. Yeah, I trained in lightning for like four levels just to get this perk, and then I went back to toxicology, used the lightning perk and some other ones that I had collected. I think I had one from Rock that I was collect that I used as well. And now my build is very stealthy, and it's kind of support-like, because um, Toxicology has another one where it's called Thirsty. I think it's called Thirsty. Every time I drink or t consume an item, not only does it take half as much time, but it also affects my teammates. So when I'm oh, invisible, cool. yeah, when I'm invisible hiding out, healing myself up, I'm not just healing me, I'm healing my teammates too, as well as giving them shields. Um, so that's that's the kind of, like very stealthy build I'm, I'm i'm really liking i'm enjoying the um That's variability because when i was playing rock it, i definitely wasn't playing like that i'm using flight mods i'm in your face letting you know attack me because i'm gonna mess you up you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's, it's kind of a tanky class you said like one of the base things was like an additional 20 percent of shield or something shield. right out the gate right yeah mm -hmm. that's cool I, and that helped so much i didn't realize that the the meta was that detailed like i thought it was more so you pick a class and then you mess around with your class meta and the mixtures of the other gauntlets with that. This is a whole other level that I wasn't paying attention to. That's dope. I, I, yeah. I, I want that game to succeed because I think it's a really fun concept. I do too. The fact, what makes, what sets this apart from other battle royales for me is that I'm actually building my character over time. You know what I mean? Um, if you didn't train in that lightning, um, in the lightning gauntlet to get that perk, you don't have it. You have to actually build that over time. Um, and that's something that you don't see in most of these other battle royales. Most of the time, you're building up like banners or cards or cosmetics or a golden gun or something like that. Um, it doesn't really change who your character is or how that character plays for you. But I like that this game is a little bit more personal um, when it comes to that. So I'm, I'm really uh, enjoying it right now. And the crossplay, any multiplayer is always dope. We're yes. always a fan of that. Pro crossplay. 
Yeah, super pro crossplay. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've been playing uh, of note recently. Yeah. Okay. No TV. Oh, and watching. Yeah. <laughs> Actually watching. Yeah. Uh, I think last week I mentioned that I was finishing Great Pretender. Mm-hmm. Um, I finished it, and I <laughs> normally I'm afraid to finish a series that I like, but this one I had to know how it ended. Like I. I needed to know how it ended, and it ended so wonderfully. Um, I hope that there's another season coming. They left it open, but it's actually pretty cool. Like, if it stops here, I won't be too disappointed. But Great Pretender is such a feel-good story, and it's so entertaining, and it's so visually stunning. Super recommended for everybody. Um, I do want to check that out. It's going to throw you through a loop. Yeah, yeah. I, it, at the very least, watch like um, you know chunks of five episodes. That's kind of how I did it because it's it's fifteen I believe total and three parts, five episodes each. So um, you know just take a little time. I, I I did like the first five in a week. I kind of chilled out a little bit. Okay, picked it back up to the next five. It's it's really good pacing, really good story. Um, don't take anything for granted in that show. You, you know it's 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 about um, con men. And, and and confidence men. That's how uh, <laughs> Laurent says it. <laughs> so um, right, nice. yeah, that's definitely yeah. That's definitely going right. to. So that does it for you, I assume. Yeah, man. That's me. Then let's go ahead and move on to our Super Smash Sunday recap. Blue's news with Blue. Take it away, Blue. All right. <clears throat> Super Smash Sunday recap of the week. We had some uh, old people. When I say old people, I don't mean like elderly. I mean people we have <laughs> old in a minute. Man. <laughs> we Nothing wrong with elderly. AARP cards on this one. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the elderly. We had some uh, fighters, <laughs> combatants that we hadn't seen in a while rejoin us. We had Ace Curb come through. Um, and he showed out a little bit with his Kirby work. Uh, I do remember him terrorist. losing the Kirby Ditto, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was gonna say our terrorists beat him the, on Kirby on Kirby, um, which was it, it was a little. It, I'm not gonna say it was an upset. I didn't say it was upsetting. It was an upset because we kind of thought that Kirby was gonna win that one. I I, th- I kind of thought Kirby was gonna win that one um, coming out the gates, but um, he definitely showed out later what he was about. Our terrorists really held it down for the most part last week, um, but. You got it. Always got to give props to M's and his icy. Emissary's icy's are formidable to say the least. Um, between guys. him and yeah, them little, them little kids is a threat. <laughs> between him and uh, Jeff Zelda, those are two uh, really big kings that need to be uh, kings or queens or people that need to be taken down. <laughs> entities <laughs> on our Super Smash Sunday. Our entities, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, overall it was Arteris, Jeff, and Emma's are really holding the holding the seats down and they did a great job. They're gonna probably show out again this week. Um so definitely come in and uh, watch the fun. Cool. Thank you for that recap. We're gonna move now into our quick updates. A uh, couple of returning stories. Uh gamer, what do you got for us? Alright, so First off, we have the wonderful battle between Epic and Apple and everyone's pockets um, because it's always about money when it comes to things like this. So as reported on IGN.com, Epic Games asked the court once more to reinstate Fortnite to Apple's App Store after daily iOS players drop over 60%. So I guess people, um, it's all about Fortnite, maybe, I guess, or they're just really really upset that it's like i can't play this on my expensive tablet this is a problem well uh, because remember the way (laughs) the way this thing worked is whoever already downloaded fortnite on their apple device like it didn't disappear they just couldn't get new updates but they kind of did this whole you know this push to push apple Right when they dropped this new Marvel thing that hit Fortnite, that whole yep. Marvel thing. So no one mm-hmm. who was maybe pay- playing primarily on iPad or Apple devices got access to that. So why? So and if you could do it elsewhere, then why would you stay on the Apple device and play it? Of course it was going to yeah. drop. But 60% oh, is yeah. a big number. 
Oh, it is. Like that's actually and like and and I I love the fact that it was actually that it actually said sixty percent. Like it was. I'm sorry. Statistically significant. That was just the first thing that I that that I initially thought of when I saw that because I love me personally. I love seeing this battle between Apple and Epic because it's I, I, not Robin Hood esque, but it's like what seems to be the little guy fighting against the big guy when they're both realistically really big guys just wanting to do their own thing on each other's platform. Yeah, it's like a clash of the titans. I there guess. we go. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, and, and, and it's like, it's not like it's just, oh, yes, whatever. They'll just go pay blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, no, you're actually looking at this and this is actually affecting your numbers and people who are using your stuff are actually, like, upset. And more so to Epic's credit of really just how large Fortnite is, where Apple is even going to this, going this far with them. I I am, I'm, I, I am not happy about the fact that um, Epic has to go through this sort of battle. But anytime someone gets to stick it to Apple like this, I am not going to lie and say that I don't get a little happy. No, yeah. I'm, if I had to choose sides in this, I would probably side with Epic because <clears throat> what they're saying, like, yes, they make a ton of money. And like, sure, Apple taking 30 percent cut because they built the ecosystem has been how it's been done in the past. But like that doesn't make it necessarily right. And, like, Epic has been trying to show, at the very least, that this isn't necessarily about money. It's about opening the platform. Because they cut all the prices for all the stuff before they did the change. So, like, they would still break even. They would just cut Apple out. Yep. Like, they're not (laughs) getting more of of the money as a result of this. Because they said it was a permanent slash to whatever they were charging. Anyway. So, and honestly, they're getting less now. Because on all the other platforms that aren't on Apple, those prices were still cut. So... Mm -hmm. Like there w- and and we've seen this before. Like Epic knows what they have with Fortnite. They've used the weight of that game franchise to make other stubborn companies do what was right for them and coincidentally, you know, consumers at large before. Like that's how you yeah. got crossplay. That's how you got uh, Fortnite to be uh, accessible outside of Nintendo's online service. Like these are things that other co- other franchises just weren't allowed to do. Epic said we're gonna do it anyway. And the other companies bent. So I mean, this this is a much bigger fight because Apple is probably the most stubborn of the big stubborn companies. So oh yeah, they they have their nice little sandbox, and you can only play in this sandbox, and they make it really difficult for you otherwise. <sighs> yeah, I, this is getting more exciting. That's how I feel. <laughs> oh yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I, I got this, I got this. popcorn. This is great. Yeah, it's a show. It's a show at this point. You know, I don't. I don't think it's um, coincidental that this update dropped after, you know, after Apple cut off the uh, updates for current players. You know, it's, it's all pressure. I don't think it's coincidence. Um, I feel. It's, I'm not gonna say it's staged. I mean, but I feel like it's planned. <laughs> oh, definitely, most definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this all right. So, to our, yeah, our next topic, right? Uh, yes, this is going to be going into because we still have to talk about Big Daddy Apple. Um, so Apple on one side is dealing with Epic and on the other side, they are dealing with Microsoft um, because uh, they announced a new App Store policy for their game streaming services. And Microsoft still says that that is bad for customers. We had talked previously about how the App Store's terms uh, and conditions didn't seem to mesh quite well with the xCloud platform. Or Stadia. Um, or Stadia because of the way that the app will be used and reviewed and on all of the special analytics that go to a top-rated app. Um, just basically saying, this is a problem that they made. I just, I'm just putting that out there. It is. Um, it's true. So Microsoft um, had something to say about their new updated policies, and it said, and it is, this remains a bad experience for customers. Gamers want to jump directly into a game from their curated catalog within one app, just like they do with movies or songs, and not be forced to download over hundreds of apps 
to play individual games from the cloud. We're committed to putting gamers at the center of everything we do and providing a great experience is core to that mission. And this is in combat to their updated terms of service, which basically states that each game that's offered in a game streaming service has to be downloaded directly from the App Store, and it must be designed to avoid duplicate payment by a subscriber and should not disadvantage non-subscriber customers. So you're telling me that you're going to be downloading each individual game that you, no, I'm sorry, you want them to download each individual game that they want to play directly to that device? No. <laughs> Like <laughs> what? Like it, it completely defeats the whole purpose, purpose of yeah. cloud. Like what's what's the point? Because well, I mean, even thing- even if it is streaming, like it, they're not they're not downloading like the game. They're downloading like an app client that lets them stream the game. So every in every individual game would have its own individual app app client. Yeah, which Ooh. that's not what this was supposed to be. And Microsoft mm-hmm. does not seem happy about it. <laughs> of course. Oh not. no. And 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 I love and and I love um the the second to last no, basically the last sentence. We are committed at putting gamers at the center of everything that we do. They have been pushing that narrative so, so hard. And it's just it's just something I'm definitely paying attention to as they continue to talk about uh basically all what what they're going to be doing. We all have seen the leaked and then later released information about the xbox series s and x um yeah more on that later yeah more yes more on that later but i just find (laughs) it really interesting that that's the one thing like that's what they're always making sure that they say is that we're putting them at the center like we we are trying to make sure that gamers can do everything anywhere which is funny that they're uh the person that they're kind of fighting in this is the one company that hates to have everything everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I personally just find that hilarious. I feel like I remember a, a tweet where Microsoft was supporting Epic. Yeah, they did do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, y'all shut up. Yeah, y'all being petty. Stay in court. <laughs> yeah, because they, they got their own problems with Apple, so of course they would be in support. And and yeah. honestly, it does it does you know feed into exactly the issue that they're having because just like Epic yeah. is saying, other apps like Netflix or Grubhub or things like that mm-hmm. don't have to deal with this nickel and diming. Like they don't have to separate yeah. out all the content that's within the app, and Apple doesn't take a cut of every single movie that's sold or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's like. They do have a case. Apple treats games differently than everything else on the store. And a lot of people it's are speculating industry. that it's because uh, games basically get them the most money. Like, the games on the App Store is the biggest money maker yep. for Apple. And Apple themselves don't necessarily have, you know, a huge foothold in the gaming market. Apple Arcade is, like, their first foray. And it's fine. But it's not, yeah. you know, it's not what these other competitors are doing. So, like, if you're going to do that where... We lay our head. Apple's like, you're going to give me some of your money. And they're like, why? Like, that's not fair. <laughs> and honestly, it's not. <laughs> like, it doesn't make it's sense. It's not. They're doing it just because they can. And right. you have app, and you have Epic and Microsoft like, yeah, yeah, that's not good enough anymore. Yeah, let's not. Right, let's, yeah. When, let's, the, let's when the big things. boys gather together against another big boy, like, then you get problems. Like, that's how you change that stuff. And that's why competition is good. Because otherwise... What the hell were we supposed to do about Apple's policies? Like nothing. We can't nothing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. at all. Press accept terms and condition, and you're gonna play the game. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, but we got one more, uh, one more update, which yeah. was something that I had to quickly Google a little bit about. So, uh, Jason Momoa is the first Justice League cast member to. Stand with cyborg actor Ray Fisher in case against Joss Wheaton. And uh, first of all, I had to make sure I was like, okay, Joss Wheaton, the same Joss Wheaton. And then I was like, case against Joss Wheaton. And I'm like, oh, oh my, okay. There is there is quite a bit against this individual. Okay. Uh, but yes, the, um, the Aquaman actor showed his support for, uh, for, for Ray Fisher in a in an Instagram tweet that just simply said, hashtag, I stand with Ray Fisher. Um, this has to do with um, the toxic and hostile set 
that yep. um, that Josh Whedon is alleged to have basically kind of Reading. set up. And I, I I had only heard positive things about Josh Whedon. So when I was looking at this, I'm just like, it's always the people you least suspect. It really is. <laughs> I am. Yeah, uh, we talked about this what last week, I think it was, or two weeks ago. No, I think it was last and week. Last week, actually, yeah. yeah. I think it was. Okay. And, and I, 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 I believe we said, you know, we hope that other folks step up and say, mm-hmm. yo, this is. Yeah, because he's kind of going it alone, like against Josh Wien and the minute. entire WB studio. Like, they were all basically saying, like, he don't got no case. He don't know what he's talking about. He's making this up. Exactly. Like, they were just, you know, throwing shade and doubt on everything he was talking about. But, like, there were other people on that set, and they could have been, you know, intimidated. But I'm glad to see, yeah. like, apparently you don't intimidate a guy like Jason Momoa. <laughs> like, <laughs> ding, ding. That, that feels good. <laughs> like, it, 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 it's nice to see another person with some name to their weight actually standing with Ray Fisher um, in this situation. It, it feels good. Yeah, it goes back to it. Kind of goes back to the point that Sigma previously made. It's like when the big boys come together, then you get change. Like, and now yep. it, <laughs> then it's just gonna, and then it's just gonna be a snowball effect where it's like, oh wait, Jason Momoa, and then somebody else, and right, then somebody else, and then suddenly someone's now, going to do something. Now that Jason Momoa says something, you got to look at the rest of the cast, like Ezra Miller, yep. uh, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot. Like they were all there. Like, what do they have to say about this? If two of the Justice League. Is saying like there was a problem here, like the rest can't ignore it, right? Or if they try, someone's gonna you know ask them, and then you're gonna get their side of the story. Yeah, I, I would I'm say, put a little I, asterisk on this too. These are two of the darkest members of this. This is true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was going to say something when you said that they can't ignore it. I'm like, eh, well, <laughs> they can. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they definitely can like we, we we have seen we have seen what silence can do and to blue's point it is the more darker members that are that have said something you're right with yep 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 uh, i i i think <laughs> i'm I, I think that's all i can um i can say without having to be redacted yeah <laughs> okay so this is still developing um Probably throughout the rest of this week, we'll get another update on what's going on in the situation. But uh, definitely, definitely something we're going to be keeping our eyes on. But that's going to do it for our quick updates. Uh, Blue, you have our first regular topic. What you got? Man, this one hurt me. This doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't happen a lot when I see something get canceled and I'm like, oh, for real? Like, there's disappointment every now and then. But this one, this one hurt. The Venture Brothers has been canceled uh, after seven seasons 17 years of uh of production season eight is not going to happen this was confirmed um by a tweet by the creator um his name jackson public is his name and um you could tell when you it is so short and i feel like he was crying when he wrote this tweet because i feel like i was crying when i read it <laughs> Man, he said, um, fortunately, it's true. Hashtag Venture Brothers has been canceled. We got the highly disappointing news a few months ago while we were writing what would have been season eight. We thank you, our amazing fans, for 17 years of your kind and patient attention. And as always, we love you. It is so I feel like it was so important that he said patient as well, because if you know anything about the Venture Brothers, they release seasons like years apart yeah it's like like whenever they're done is when you get them exactly and it was always every season to my in my opinion every season was better than the last one it never had a really a lull or a down point it was just always getting better and more complicated and 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 yeah jesus the the venture brothers and what's worse is that in season seven huge reveal at the end yeah. Onto the nature of the whole show. Yeah. So it's just like you finally get this validation and you're like, yes, I know what the Venture Brothers is. Yes. Oh my God. That blew my mind. Like, yeah, that blew my mind. <laughs> like, I was sitting there talking to my girlfriend who does not watch that show at all. <laughs> but I'm like, oh my God. Do you understand what this means the whole time? <laughs> the whole time? <laughs> 
Oh, that show, that show is great. Yeah, this, this really sucks that there's not going to be any more of it. Well, I will say, it, it, for those who don't know, just real quick, for those who don't know, the Venture Brothers is a is an animated series originally introduced on Adult Swim back in I want to say 2003. Yep, that would be 17 years. I can do the math. Uh, <laughs> back in 2003, <laughs> and um, really, if, if you've ever watched Johnny Quest or any of those Hanna Barbera. Um, kind of cartoon shows back in the day it was kind of like a revitalization and a modernization of that era um it was a, a very satirical take on it as well exactly yeah you had you're still like 70s looking high technology but it actually worked and there was actually practicality to everything um being a hero and a villain actually meant something there's there's guidelines there's rules there's it, there's so it was, much. Yeah, it was like super show. bureaucratic how yeah like hero like heroism and villainy is handled in that world and every and everything about exactly. the show is like incredibly cynical <laughs> like it's oh man it's, <laughs> that show was like that show was truly brilliant honestly like the writing the world setup it's oh man it it's a real it's shame incredible. that it's being canceled but really. i i do think because we've seen this kind of thing before. Like, The Venture Bros is a very long-running, very fan-favorite series. It's been on Adult Swim since its inception, right? I don't think it's a stretch yep. to think that yep. something else might want to pick this series up. Either, you know, an HBO Max, a Netflix, even an Amazon Prime, you know? Like, if the fans, if the fan outcry oh. is big enough, I think we... Especially since, you know, the creator... He said he was in the middle of doing the eighth season so it's not like he's done season eight yeah like he was in the middle of writing it so all he really needs is you know the resources to put it back on the air and there are a lot of platforms that want something like this to kind of you know draw people in so i don't know I, there's, a, there's my, a good chance i think that we can maybe see something in the future my hope for this show is a similar path that arrested development took another one of my favorite shows mm. it got canceled off of fox and Netflix poured some money into it. Now, we're not going to talk about the initial Netflix season that got put out for <laughs> Rest of Development because that was a little disaster. However, <coughs> it was fixed. They took the time to actually fix it. So with that, that hiccup aside, I hope somebody like Netflix, somebody like Amazon, somebody like HBO Max says, this still has merit. Let's get you funded. Let's get you on this platform. And hopefully they don't mess with the formula um, because this show is very specific um every line and every plot point affects everybody in that world um or it has been affecting everybody in the world and we just didn't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like Everything super like intricate that. storytelling so, uh, like i, I love yeah that kind i of... really hope the comes back so yeah uh with that gamer we have a new game announcement what you got all right so <laughs> All right, so I had originally saw this, and I um, don't know if you know, I am a big fan of Hyrule Warriors. I would be putting that on my playing every week, every single week, just because I'm, like, doing one stage. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, The Completionist. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so the completionist did, uh, he did do Hyrule Warriors, not definitive edition. This is the edition when it was originally on the, uh, Wii U. And I have been taking it upon myself to try and complete Hyrule Warriors definitive edition on the Nintendo Switch. And, um, it is almost as bad as doing one of those uh, trial duties in Final Fantasy 14 that takes like an hour and I'm just like tired <laughs> because sometimes I'll be doing some dungeons in Final Fantasy 14 and I'm just like okay we're done right but Hyrule Warriors is supposed to be what happens before Breath of the Wild um, <clears throat> yeah Age of but, Calamity is the subtitle yes, age, age of Calamity um, so you actually get to play as Link and the Guardians um now, here's the thing, though. You kind of already know how it ends, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's prequel, right? <laughs> right. But even with that being said, to be able to fight, I'm looking forward to uh, to fighting as um, 
while I can't, I think of the Gerudo lady. The na- yes, thank you. Urbosa was her name. Yes. Yeah. I- yeah. And 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 only because and like I also see that in Hyrule Warriors, the dodge mechanic of Breath of the Wild was used in the trailer. I wonder if, now if they bring that mechanic to this version of Hyrule Warriors, I will be thoroughly impressed because to have that sort of mechanic where you can actually like, you know, successfully perfect dodge, time slows down, and then you can get a whole lot of hits in, that would be fantastic when you're dealing with enemies all around you to be able to have that moment of like, whew, okay, let me think about things. Do I want to attack or do I want to go in like dodge? Um, but for those who aren't familiar with Hyrule Warriors, uh, basically think of a Zelda skin over Dynasty Warriors. That's it. Yeah, it's a Musou game. Yeah. So I have a question now. I, I'm I'm one of the rare gamers who own a Switch and not Breath of the Wild, right? So story wise, can you guys give us? You don't know how I do it. <laughs> no, I, no, I also don't own Breath of the Wild, but that's because I played it on okay. Wii U. Okay. Okay. Um. Well. Okay, I, I'll say I'm one of the rare Switch users who haven't played it. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, so w- this is a prequel, a, a Calamity. Can you give us like a little bit of a, a tiny synopsis on what we're going to be looking forward to? Okay, um, I'm going to be as general as I can then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so... Uh, Ganon rose. Uh, Ganon rose to power again, surprising absolutely no one. Um, except does. this, uh, except <laughs> uh, except this time he's bigger. Except this time he's much bigger. Dare I say he is a calamity, and it is up to these guardians to try to stop him. Unfortunately, not mm-hmm. all of them do, and so Zelda kind of hits the reset button, and then you start playing Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Got gotcha. you. Okay. I don't know. That, about- <laughs> that's exactly the synopsis I was looking for. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that synopsis, but is it accurate though? Uh, sort of. I mean, the, well, the then, thing, the well, thing then that, that's it. Then, well, the thing. That, I the mean, thing, he, he the, doesn't want. He didn't want too much. But the, uh, here's here's one important point that I think was left out. Like this. Okay, what you got? This takes place 100 years prior to the events of Breath of the Wild. Mm. Like that's the amount so, of time difference. That has yeah that that has passed. So yeah, once Zelda hit that reset button, a hundred years. Oh, so like she really kind of overshot the, or did well, she think that I am re- I am using the term reset button very generally. Yeah, it's not it's not okay. a literal reset. It's got you. Got she you. does yeah. something, and then calamity is avoided for one hundred years. <laughs> yeah. Got you. Okay, yeah. I won't ask more questions because I did ask for general. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, okay, cool. I'll but I'm, I'm actually super excited for this because uh, yeah. I'm I myself am not a Muso fan. I know Gamer said he loved uh, Hyrule Warriors. I know Blue, you have a history with Dynasty Warriors itself. Oh, uh, yeah. And Jeff mm-hmm. has actually you know played a lot of those types of games as well. Like I've never been a fan of the Muso genre, uh, but I did have a decent time when I played the the recent One Piece Pirate Warriors Four game, which is another Muso because I was familiar with yeah. the franchise and I thought they did a really good job of making you feel like part of it, even if the gameplay itself was a little light, let's say. Mm-hmm. But from this trailer, and honestly, from what I've heard in terms of Hy- the previous Hyrule Warriors, Zelda kind of takes it a little further. Like they they let they let the okay. mechanics and the gameplay and the you know the world do a little bit more for you than just mashing buttons throughout the whole thing. Like gamer, can you attest to that at all? Yes, yes, I can. Um, so the one thing that I really appreciated with Hyrule Warriors is that it's not just okay. You could just like just keep hitting light attack, and then you'll just go through. You know, you'll just go through whatever. You can clearly see that every single character has their individual character uh, signature combos, and that. Some of them and some stages work very well. Um, for example, in Hyrule Warriors, you can play a Sheik. Sheik has different harps. Each of the different harps has different elements. So if you're fighting in um, so if you're fighting in Death Mountain, well, it's clearly that you want to be using more of the spells that have the um, wind element. Um, if you are in an area with a whole lot of Deku's and you're Sheik, then you want to be using what has um, the fire element it, it it's that sort of mechanic 
okay. where you actually have to think about that, and it's not just your typical X X X X X match or match, X. match. Yeah, like it's just not. mindless fighting. That's that's the in thing a, that turns me off. And yet, and this seems a, more thoughtful. Yes. In addition, you also have your standard um, tool bag of Legend of Zelda weapons. You have your bombs. You have your boomerang. You have your potions. You have fairies. Uh, you have your hook shot. Uh, some people have a shield. Um, you know, certain things like that. So there's uh, they really used all of the characters, like even Tingle, and I hate. Tingle. Why I'm do you su- hate Tingle? Yeah, I'm actually surprised to hear you say that. Like, I feel like Tingle's kind of up your alley <laughs> in terms of like. <laughs> Excuse me. In terms of like characters and no, that's not your cup of tea. <laughs> I have taste. I, 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 like, come on, come on now. I'm Tingle. I'm, I'm blind. I'm blind. But that he no. Tingle no. is practically a half genie hero. You. Oh wow. You will not do that. <laughs> Them fight and words. You you will put respect. If Tingle's on not a genie, Shante's name, what is he? You will <laughs> annoying. That's what he is. He is annoying in a green suit that is too tight for him. That <laughs> Claptrap is, is what annoying. he is. Tingle seems just he's just not able rather, to do everything. I, like he's more autistic have, than anything. Claptrap <laughs> has okay. We're not. I can't. I think, we we are going to get on a tangent if we keep this up. Tingle's I, more obnoxious than anything else i feel like mm. but i don't know yeah i don't like tingle either but <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I just thought he was another dude like i, I wasn't tripping when I, I know he's like I, I first saw him in uh what was he in uh, wind waker right i think yes right where, uh, where he first appeared no. i don't know if that's where he first appeared no no oh, okay. no well that's the first time i saw him no he uh he actually, uh, he actually first appeared in Ocarina of Time because you have to. No, Majora's Mask. You bought maps from him. That's right. I actually do remember in Majora's. Yes, you um, bought you bought yeah, maps from him never, in Majora's Mask. He never really struck me as someone who is annoying. Like he was there, he had his boisterous personality, but he never really like got in my way or <laughs> like actually pissed me off. I don't know. I, don't know. I didn't. I never. I didn't expect that strong feeling for Tingle. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, just no, no, no. don't apologize. <laughs> yeah, we, we're oh, not gonna we're, we're we're not gonna compare those two. Shante is on a completely other level, and Tingle needs to be six feet under. Wow. Oh, okay. My. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well, uh, anything else on Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity? Um, we'll be getting it. We'll do, we'll definitely be getting that. Uh, when when it, it comes out. Right? Did they give a release date? I and nah, I don't uh, November twentieth. November twentieth. Okay, so holiday season. And is it is it multiplayer? Do you guys know? Oh, that's a good yes. question. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, yes, it is. It, it as is if if they follow the same formula as Hyrule Warriors, the like definitive edition, then yes, this should also be uh, this should also be multiplayer. I think it's only going to be local, but yes, multiplayer. So this is a oh, soft local? yes, and that's absolutely I terrible. Think. I think I don't yeah, have I any. Oh, yeah, I, I I don't I, I don't know for certain if it is, but you know who does know. Well, while you look Nintendo. that up, <laughs> I I also wanted to add because we talked about Smash a little earlier, uh, and Blue mentioned mm-hmm. something about you know a potential new character. This lines up perfectly with seeing another Breath of the Wild representative in Smash. More than likely, one of those four guardians. I can see that. Like, because Nintendo has done this before. Like, when there's a new thing on the horizon, they'll use Smash as a selling device. And a lot of people have said Fire they Mickey wanted House. to see one of those guardians in Smash. So this could this could be a perfect storm, you know. The example to that is Fire Emblem Three Houses, right? Right. Yeah. They dropped <laughs> like the corporate was Shortly like after put the game a, put Byleth in it. <laughs> 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 like, even that Sakurai was, was like, hey, I think they have too many Fire Emblem characters. He was like, we don't care. <laughs> they said, psych, they still buying the game. <laughs> if that's the case, it's I I have a feeling it's going to be the Goron. I, I wouldn't be surprised about that, too. That that would be my least. I, yeah. fa- like, I, I would want that in the game the least. I would prefer either Urbosa because she, you know, is kind of a, a woman of color of sorts. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. 
But and she's a swordsman that I will accept. It, does she use a sword? <gasps> she uses like a like a staff thing. I thought, right? I don't know. I forget now. I thought she had like a like a staff with like maybe a blade on it. Uh, no, she uses a scimitar. So okay, gotcha. Mm-mm. But yeah, if yeah, Yo, so my top pick would be Urbosa. Cool. But if not her, uh, I think. Rivali looks a little too much like Falco, so maybe it would have exactly. to be Exactly. That's why I don't girl. think it I don't yeah. think it would be him. <laughs> and they already have Zelda, so it's not gonna be Zelda. And as far as like what fighters, if they did brawler, do Zelda though? Like just a, another Zelda. <laughs> Breath of the Wild Zelda. Yeah, like just Breath if of the Wild. Breath of the Wild Zelda. <laughs> Zelda. Okay. Now here's the thing though. Breath of the Wait, I God, Blue has not played. I have to be quiet. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure there's other viewers uh, and listeners who haven't played it as well. So Probably. Don't blame me. <laughs> yeah, don't just blame me. It's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I feel like it's going to be Goron just because of like the brawler, the the brawler. Yeah, aspect I see it. I totally see him. it. But damn, they should put her both in that game. But anyhow. Oh. Oh yeah. Uh, did you get clarity on the multiplayer thing, or we'll just come back to it at some point in the future? It, it, uh, come back to it. I, I I had not find anything that definitively had that definitively says it. All right, no problem. We'll move on to our next topic. Uh, Blue, what you got for us? Big news, man. So I feel like I'm like the tea guy on the on podcast. Like I'm always talking about some scandal or something. Like that, you know? <laughs> um, Scandalous. <yes. laughs> BBET. Uh, here we go. Wow. Ubisoft that should be a whole CEO. new, a whole new segment. <laughs> Um, Ubisoft CEO apologizes to everyone who was hurt by the misconduct at the company. Um, and this is before the, the Ubisoft conference that we saw this past week that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. But, um, you know, you see this title, like everyone who's hurt, what you talking about, man? Uh, back in July, and did we talk? Did we cover this story? I feel like I want to say we we talked about a lot brain. of the scandals, and I I do think yeah. the Ubisoft stuff slipped through the cracks because okay. what they did was their first forward conference, they said something like in a tweet maybe, and then just did the conference without any sort of message. So exactly. when we talked about it, it was just about the conference. So that's that's our fault right. that we weren't paying attention close enough to that stuff. But they're finally addressing it now. I mean, and, and, and the thing is, right, so what happened, right? Back in July, there was um, allegations of women and people of color being um, affected by misconduct. <laughs> They're being abused. They were um, being put into an environment that they felt like they had to do anything to stay in. Um, and it's, it's, it's terrible. Uh, one of the more specific complaints was from a an executive named um is it mm, yeah maxime maxime beland now you got to remember these are french names yeah, these so are french I'm people so 100 right yeah <laughs> but um they allegedly choked a female employee at a work party right like geez. that was the first thing so then and, and if you read into the kotaku article they say later on first of all when that first happened, not everybody believed it. Now, unfortunately, that happened. Not everybody believed it. They thought it was just a rumor, but it was also kind of like, don't mess with this guy. He might choke you out. Um, that's just like a terrible workplace environment anyway, right? Right? Like, <laughs> And then other people were saying the same thing, that he was choking out other folks. And, it, it, you know, obviously, they um, they took him out of power, but... The fact that it took this long. He addressed this years, or not years, <laughs> he addressed this months later um, publicly uh, right before this conference. And it's kind of, the timing is funky, man. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, de- it's definitely too, like, not too late, but it's late. Like, people were it's concerned late. about this stuff months ago. And honestly, should have been concerned about it. What it was happening, like the first rumors of one of your bosses choking people, like this man was still a boss. <laughs> like, so definitely slow to react. There, there's some yeah. some shifting that has to go on there, which uh, the CEO, Yves Guimont, 
is basically saying has happened at this point in time, but I guess only after, you know, the public outcry. Yeah. On top of this, he's saying, you know, oh, we're going to donate, um, I think he said a million dollars to some graduate programs for some of the employees. So he's trying to, it seems like he's trying to mitigate um, a lot of this by giving his employees incentives, which in all honesty, it sounds like some of the stuff he should have been doing anyway, and it shouldn't be in response to people getting choked out. Uh, like that is such a wild thing. <laughs> what scares me about 2020, um, and and you know some of the recent years, is that we hear wild stories like this and we're not phased. That's what scares me. We're like, yeah, it would become a commonplace. Happened. It's sad. It's really sad. Uh, but that's a whole societal podcast topic uh, <laughs> but yeah man so he's just going forward uh you know they're going to be paying attention to uh to how their their workplaces are set up how the the uh, management is actually treating the employees but of course he's saying everything that the ceo should say um but yeah the the the, the main part of the the article and and one of the i guess the controversial parts is that this wasn't a part of the conference it was something that they just threw on before and didn't even mention afterwards. Yeah, which is, you know, like slightly better than the last one that they did where they ignored it entirely. <laughs> but but it's just like, y'all really don't care about this. You're just doing it so you can say you did it. Pretty much. That That is kind of. We apologize. Point. That's what they that's what they're going to say later on. We apologize. You saw it right there. <laughs> like. I don't know. Okay, you guys are the CEO of Ubisoft, right? You heard that when your top boys choke somebody out, or possibly choke somebody out. I mean, what's the first move? I don't know what my answer is, but what's y'all's first move? I mean, clearly you would want to investigate that claim, right? Yeah. <laughs> but like, do you got take the guy out of power? Do you, you know, like what's 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 the the first physical? Do you, release a statement like what's what's the dealio because these guys took months to say anything yeah okay they, they may have been trying to mitigate the damage like the public damage because i don't know how yeah i don't know how much of this was open to the public and to be fair if i was a ceo and i heard something like that was happening in my company that my name's attached to yeah i also mm -hmm. would not want that spread all over the world but i would want to solve the problem you know what i mean they weren't doing exactly. either though they were trying to cover it up and hoping it was going away. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's the scary part. And that's that's exactly my point. Uh, they were too slow. In my opinion, they're too slow to address the problem. Right. There was more work on cover-up and secrecy than correction. Agreed. And this is happening in our gaming industry, man. Like, gaming brings so many people joy. And do you know how much of a commitment it is to build these complex worlds to bring people this joy? And then now they got to worry about getting choked out at parties? Like, for real? Like, this this wasn't my idea of de-stressing after, <laughs> after we completed the game. I'm sorry. Not to kick shame, but I'm not into this. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's, it's disheartening. It's insane. But It's disheartening. Speaking of Ubisoft moving forward, they went forward with their live stream, which we are obligated to <laughs> basically comment on because this this is stuff that's relevant to feels, us. It feels bad, like hyping this up because it, it was a decent it was a decent conference. Yeah, but like just you mean, knowing what this company is doing in the background, hurts. right? <laughs> but I mean, definitely, definitely don't let them off the hook for any of that yeah. stuff. Definitely, you know, voice your concerns for things like this and make, make sure they stay honest. Like if additional stories about this kind of garbage is coming out, like call for the CEO to basically step down. Cause it's his job to fix this stuff. And he put his face yep. on there to say, that's what they're going to do. If they don't do it, there's no reason for him to keep running that company. Yves Guimond has been the head, him and his brothers, I believe have been the head of uh, Ubisoft since its inception for years. They fought off um, hostile takeovers from Viacom recently so I know Dang. probably how much that company means to him. So he should want it to be, you know, a happy, healthy place for employees. If he's part of the mm -hmm. problem, then 
the company, you know, the staff, they can do better without him. That's how I feel. Sorry, before we go into the conference, one last note I wanted to make on when they did not um, actually have this video as a part of the conference, their main excuse was a time constraint, which is it just shows you where their priorities are. And that, that, that kind of hurt that they said time constraint to me. Um, I feel like that should be the first thing you say on your live stream. Hey, this stuff's happening. We're correcting it. This is also the good stuff that we put out. I, I feel like that's a good move. Yeah, like if I, you didn't do it earlier, that's a BS excuse. <laughs> like it was a it's pre-recorded a video. They could have held it for a day, for two days, for a week. Like we've seen it happen before. You know, companies were like, oh, we don't feel like this is a good time to talk about our stuff right now, so we're gonna delay it. Yeah. So Ubisoft clearly not caring enough to do anything like that. But all right, let's get this conversation. This is like, oh, let's just do this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to sound like that because I am excited about some. Genuinely, it's just the company itself is leaving a bad taste in my mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it hurts. <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, let's talk about it. So uh, the first game that um that was of note was Immortal Phoenix. Immortals, excuse me, Phoenix Rising. And that was the uh, Breath of the Wild lookalike. Right. Yeah, they, um, they showed it slash... off forever ago. Yeah. Go ahead. No, yeah, I was going to say, they, they showed this off, <laughs> Not maybe not the last E3, maybe that was the last E3, but they showed it off for the first time, world premiere, brand new franchise, and it was called Gods and Monsters, remember? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it kind of disappeared. And now it's come back (laughs) with a brand new name. Honestly, a worse name. I don't like this name. (laughs) Immortals. Phoenix Rising. And Phoenix ain't even spelled the way you think it is. (laughs) F-E-N-Y-X. They said, how can we spell this wrong and people still say it right? Why didn't they just add add a silent Q? (laughs) They might as well. Put put a hashtag in there. You know, <laughs> you know, you know what? You know what, Blue? You're not going big enough. We need this to be a strong password, okay? We need a capital letter. We need <laughs> like, and it can't be something. Spell seriously, it. And it can't be something you've used in the last four video game titles. Spell it in in leet. <laughs> in leet. <laughs> F three oh N Y. <laughs> anyway, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. Uh, title aside, this game actually looks like fun. Uh, <laughs> it Sigma, when we were watching the the conference together, you said it looked kind of like a a different version of Breath of the Wild. Maybe a little, you know, Breath of the Wild to uh, the next level, maybe? Yeah, like a, like a... Like, it looked like there were additional mechanics on top of what Breath of the Wild created. I didn't see any climbing, right. so that's something that I guess they're not trying to focus on. But you saw the gliding. Uh, there's, you know, s- sorts of flying in it because you have like that wing power up that the main character has. Um, yeah. There, the combat seems to look to be a little bit more in depth. Like it's faster. It's more hack and slashy, and such. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to say that you know Zelda didn't have puzzles out in the overworld, but the puzzles like kind of mix, kind of combat and tool use. It looked like because like you had to like do a thing. And like jump in the air and like hit a like it. It just looks like they're adding stuff on top of what's there, which is a good thing because the core of what Breath of the Wild is is freaking fantastic. Like honestly, it's the it's still probably one of the best games on Switch. Period. Uh, my pick for the best Zelda game out now, like in existence. Oh. So honestly, like I love the fact that people are trying to copy that, get as close as possible, and then add to it. Like that's that's the way to go. <laughs> I feel you. It's kind of like a, a imitation is the best form of flattery, right? Yeah, cause, and because it's, it's a very strong point to start from. And uh, yeah. if if any yeah. company can kind of try and match the creativity of Nintendo, I think Ubisoft is you know as good as anybody at giving it a shot. You know what I mean? Like they they have tons of experience with open worlds. Mm-hmm. They have experience with all sorts of game genres in general. 
So, yeah, why not? Give them a shot. Like, they're really good at just throwing out new IPs left and right anyway. So, why not? Okay. Yeah, they're kind of all over the place. And they're kind of like a jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. Uh, master of none. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, master of some. I'll give them master of some. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, um, unfortunately, I do have to. I do have small confirmation. It is local co-op for Hyrule Warriors. Why? Effing local, Nintendo. <laughs> local local co-op. Reason being that um, typically Dynasty Warrior S games do not do very well with online uh, multiplayer. So you will basically be able to pass a controller to somebody on one system, but it's not like it's going to be like multiple systems or anything like that. So it's local one system multiplayer. So it's split it screen. Might, couch co-op. So it might be changing later, but that is how that is what I have. Um, that is what I have right now. It has not been confirmed that Nintendo Online will be used for this particular video. <laughs> that game. is a, incredibly disappointing. Like, and and if it's if it's not at the very least. Like multiple, like a local connection, like in the same room. Yeah, like that's even worse because they're they're complaining about what the the online functioning. Like you're cutting the the resolution on a switch in half, on a switch in half, <laughs> to do local split screen. <laughs> yes, because the the assumption is that you'll dock it and have a bigger screen to work with, which I know is not fair, but I know that that's what they're going to that's what they're going to say because they most likely don't want to put in the effort to figure out how to get this to be uh, local wireless at the minimum. That's, that way... That's awful. I'm but yeah, un- unfortunately, game. that's what we've got. <laughs> unfortunately, that's what we've got right now. I was actually very excited mm. to buy this. I may not buy this game anymore. Because <laughs> that's stupid. I can... Yeah, uh, I, honestly, I was considering buying it until that. But... Um, but yeah, let's get back to... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I just yeah. had to put finish that one. No, thanks for that update. But I mean, yeah, on the same note, in that Breath of the Wild tangent, like gamer, what are your thoughts on uh, Phoenix Rising? Did I say Phoenix Rising? That's not what it's called. Phoenix, Immortals Phoenix Immortal, Rising. Okay, yeah, Phoenix Immortals Rising. Phoenix Rising. I feel like something else is called Phoenix Rising. No, I'm thinking of Advent Rising, which is Advent an Xbox Rising. game. So ignore me. All right, go ahead, gamer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it looked it, it it looked okay, but. I'm I'm not saying anything with like okay so sometimes when I think and see Ubisoft my eyes just kind of glaze over because all of their stuff is kind of like it it just makes me feel the same so I looked at this and I'm like oh wow this looks pretty and then that was it like that was that was my thoughts oh this game looks pretty and like oh look food like I'm I'm <laughs> sorry I, I just, it did not it, it just didn't really pull me at all and this and i didn't even know i wasn't even really thinking about all the controversy of ubisoft it's just ubisoft is boring to me it is like yes i i i like assassin's creed looks again very nice Eh, okay yeah Plants look very nice if you flower them. Like that's Oh man. Okay, look, I was with you until you said it's just looking nice. <laughs> I said now I'm not the biggest fans of tree games, but they're not just visually stunning. Um they're Oh, I didn't even say they were visually stunning. I say they look nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like they're not, they don't just look nice in my opinion. I, I feel like okay. there's a lot more depth to them. Um Yeah, that, that I, I can't I don't know. I couldn't just hear hear that and just sit quiet. <laughs> no, I mean there there's definitely a a formula that Ubisoft follows for a lot of its games. Like the things that work in some of its franchises that could work in others, they'll usually just you know import it over and then like reskin it. But um, yeah. for the most part, I do think they tend to embrace new ideas, even even though they reuse the good ideas that they have you know over and over again. When there is something new, they don't shrug it off. Like they'll they'll go and mess with it. As you can see in yeah. this, because you know, this kind of more lighthearted open world game is something that we haven't seen from them before. Yes, we've seen it from others like Nintendo and a couple other people who are, you know, copying Nintendo right now. So I'm willing to give it a shot. Like, as much as I like Breath of the Wild, 
I feel like Ubisoft's development studios are talented enough to pull off, you know, a, a decent f- facsimile. I feel like more to your point, Sigma, um, Hyperscape is an example of Ubisoft trying something right out of their normal genre and making it palatable. I think that's the word. Because while I'm not the biggest Hyperscape fan, I think it's fun to play. Right, yeah, so they, they, um, they'll try to hand at, you know, stuff that's popular, stuff that, you know, is good, and they, it's not shameless, at least, you know what I mean? They're like, okay, well, let's put our spin on it. Like, sure, it's inspired by this genre, this other yeah. game, whatever, but, like, they don't, they don't, like, rip it off wholesale. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And right now, Rainbow Six Siege is huge uh, <laughs> for, for Ubisoft, and that's, uh... But anyway, let's talk about this conference. Next uh, <laughs> game we want to talk about, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time Remake. Now, I am not a Prince of Persia fan. Um, however, I love remakes and not remastering. Um, and that that's a... That's kind of like what a What would you consider the difference, please? The difference for me is a remake, you build it again from the floor up. You use the same story um, and even the same levels and everything like that, but you start from the beginning it yeah, feels like, like you're making the the same game in like as if it was made today like it's the same plot exactly. the same whatever they update what they need to to make it ma- to make it uh playable today that's a remake okay as With opposed to remastering, remastering remastering to me feels like they took the same game updated some of the textures and made sure i can use this controller to play it um <clears throat> Some some and some are better than change. others. To be fair, like there there are some that will Most add definitely. like quality of quality of life updates and things that like if there like was something that was broken about it in the past, they'll fix that. But largely, it is the same game, just you know, with more updated bells and whistles or whatnot. That's more of a remaster. Remake to me feels like they're taking the time to, just like Sigma said, bring it to twenty twenty, and and not just bring it there, but have it survive you know there's a lot of um games today that you can even pick up on game pass uh that are remasters of old games and you can play it for like 10 15 minutes but that's about it like you, your eye <laughs> for me my eyes just cannot look at um low res things for too long <laughs> 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 it, it's hard uh as bad and, as a so graphic yeah, snob Man, just like just a bit. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a, sorry. Is this only? Is this only seven twenty? What am I, a migrant farm? What are you doing? Like, like that. Yo, that, that, that that's major. kind of <laughs> okay, okay. I'm a film major. You know what I mean? I gotta look at that stuff. But uh, <laughs> that being said, it looks like, as you can see by Sigma's reaction, Prince of Persia fans are super excited. Yeah, I love um, the Prince of Persia franchise. Uh, I yeah, don't, I what will, are you looking forward to yeah. most in this? Both of y'all. Yeah, I never, I never played like the original joints, like that had like the rotoscoped yeah. um, art style. But mm-hmm. one of the first uh, computer games I ever played, I borrowed from an, an uncle when I was young, was Prince of Persia 3D. And oh, wow. it ran like garbage <laughs> on my home yeah. computer. But me and my little brother played that game in slow motion because that's how bad it ran. All the way up until I want to say near the very end, where it would freeze on a cutscene, and we just couldn't we couldn't finish it because it would no. just stop in the middle of that cutscene every single time. But we loved that That's game. The worst. It was it was it was terrible. Uh, we weren't techie back then. <laughs> but um. Oh no, I get. It. Yeah, so I was familiar with the franchise ever since that, and then when they when Ubisoft was like, "Oh, here's this Prince of Persia in the Sands of Time game," instantly went out to get it. Absolutely loved it. Played uh, the next one, which was uh, the Warrior Within. Within, and then the last one was the Two Thrones. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a dope trilogy that I think is one of the best trilogy stories in games. Period. Like the wow, way, for real, because like, it's a time travel story. The way they loop that story from the beginning to end over the course of three games is amazing. So when I heard okay. that when I heard that they were redoing Sands of Time, 
in my heart, I was hoping that, oh, is it like a big thing where like they stick all three of the stories into the one? It seems like it's just the first game. So that was a little yeah. disappointing because I, I I don't want them to remake the other two. Like I don't want to buy three and games over separate. again. <laughs> yeah, but at the very least, if this sells well, we may see a return of a new age Prince of Persia. Because if you guys don't know, that's what they were working on when Assassin's Creed was born. They were trying to make a new Prince of Persia. And then they were using like the little hiding in crowds and stuff and whatnot, and it turned into a whole other thing. And Assassin's Creed was born. So since Assassin's Creed blew up, they kind of threw Prince of Persia to the sides. Now, <laughs> I have to give past Ubisoft credit because I don't believe I have played a platforming game that uses that uses time as well as Prince of Persia the Sands of Time, the original on the GameCube. Yeah, that's the platforming, the the platforming in that game with the ability of slowdown and time and just how the prince would go across walls was unprecedented. It was amazing, and if the remake is coming out as you guys are saying, where it's like they make it from the ground up, I think I am going to be very very pleased with this as long as and as opposed to what sigma said it just sticks to the first one because to me the first one needed nothing it needed absolutely nothing i could play that game okay. over and over again it's not greatest of all time it's not like ratchet and clank and sly cooper but it still is excellent excellent time-based platformer it's so really this good. this is my question now, right? And this is more for fun than anything. What happens when you start playing this game and you realize that they mapped the face to look like Jake Gyllenhaal from the movies? See, they didn't do that. What? <laughs> <laughs> if you were watching the conference with that, the thoughts that's going to be a patch, though. They that's put the original the original voice actor is doing the mocap and voice over again. Like he's in there. No man. No, it's going to be a patch. What, what's funny Jake that you mentioned that is because oh, yeah. they, they made... Because the thing is, the Prince, the Sands of Time trilogy was three games, but they made a fourth one mm -hmm. after or around the same time as that it's, movie. It's just called Prince of Persia. No, no, no. That, you're, that's, that's the reboot that they tried. But they, oh, made, okay. they made a fourth Prince of Persia game that I can't remember the name of. It was called Prince of Persia something something. And it had a dude in it that looked sort of like Jake Gyllenhaal. But like they went back to the Sands of Time mythos, even though that story had completed with two thrones. That's weird. Did you find it? Did you search for it? When I searched for it, I just got Prince of Persia in 2008, the one that... Um, Gamer Gamer the, wa the watercolor about. looking one, so right? I, I thought that was a terrible game. That, that oh, reboot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, okay. There was one particular... Uh, okay. I'm sorry. So I don't want to spoil it for anyone who will be playing this game, but the puzzles that they make you solve in this game make you feel like you're an infant. It is not challenging at all. It, mm. it's, it's so stupid. And not to mention, the prince is... He's like a high school jerk. I just hate him. <laughs> no, yeah, he's he very. Just, he just has a punchable everything. Yeah, he's everything very like about him like is snippy punchable. and he's he's very roguish in that version. Yeah, like like the, like is that the, the one where he had like the yeah he the got like rap. tons of wraps on his head and scarves and whatnot. Like it, the game looked fine. It's just like Gamer was saying, like the gameplay was very very. Uh, Simple, not, not even simple. It was like not e no, not even bare bones. It was, it was like, um, it was a, it was like a timed button prompt, in the entire Quick way action. through. Like all the platforming challenges were hit X, hit B, hit A, hit X, hit B, hit A, and then maybe they would switch up what you pressed. But like the prompts would even show up on screen. I remember to tell you what you were supposed to press, as opposed to you just knowing. And then if you died, you literally just reset because that was built into the lore is that you the girl just reverses time. Wait, for wait, you wait, or wait, something. wait. Let's be more let, let, okay. I because you mentioned that, I have to say it. It's not so much that she reverses time. It's literally she just 
she just appears out of nowhere and just pulls you from the bottomless pit you yeah, were she falling like, in. Yeah, flies in, grabs you, and just puts you back. But then she just disappears. <laughs> it's Why not like she she's... just helped me get across the ledge that I fell down? They might as well Thank have you. done that Thank because you. that's how Thank simple you. the game was. But okay, although... I'm sorry. Okay, okay. One last... <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. One little <laughs> tiny thing. There is one puzzle in the game. One mm. stupid puzzle where you are sitting on a circular platform and there's hundreds of this copy and you have to figure out which one is 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 her you are given absolutely nothing you are given no 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 message no nothing about how to solve this puzzle you know how to solve it walk off you, you walk off walk the away. cliff no, you walk off the cliff because only oh. the right one. And I was, oh, I wanted to punch my TV. I wanted to punch my TV so hard. And it was one of those lie. old fatback TVs. So it would have hurt a whole lot more punching like a flat screen. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That sounds like the most clever puzzle. Mm. Honestly, given the circumstance, just from hearing what you guys told me, that sounds pretty funny. Like... That's how you would know. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's. I, mean, I don't think I'm mad at that, that in particular. That. But yeah, that game was very, very simple. Like they really just didn't care about that franchise. I don't know what that. I don't know what that was originally, but it's like mm. they was like, "Uh, put the Prince of Persia on this," is what I felt like because it had nothing to do with what that game franchise was known for. But uh, the the game that I was talking about that <laughs> it literally is forgotten is called Prince of Persia: The Forgotten Sands. <laughs> Oh, oh all right. Fitting. Wow. So, yeah, it was well, a fourth Sands of Time game that's outside of the trilogy, and that was more tied to, like, the movie. So he does kind of look like Jake Gyllenhaal in that one. You're right. Oh, my gosh. That was in 2010. <laughs> so, but um, speaking of less forgotten things, uh, Scott Pilgrim is coming back? Ah, yo, I'm, I was... We were so hyped. Yeah, we were screaming we, in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> call. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, Scott oh, Pilgrim's man. We've back. been asking for <clears throat> this. For a long, long time. At least multiple times on the podcast and countless times um, in person. Yeah, I talk about this game Scott, all the not, time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing. Um, it, and it's the definitive, definitive edition, right? So they're adding yeah, they're, Knives and... Mm-hmm. Um, Wallace Wells. Wallace? Yep. Wallace Wells. That's right. Um, wait, wait, so wait, 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 wait. Are those the only characters? No, no, no. The only those are the, the two added. additional. Okay, there okay, are, okay. I think there are five playable characters at the start. And then I think either four or five, and then there's at least one you unlock. Mm-hmm. I think you unlock cool. Nega Scott. Yes. Right. But then Who's they, my favorite? Yeah. Over Who just OP. <laughs> and then they added Knives, and they added Wallace, and then they added online co-op, because that game launched with just local. Like, we all mm-hmm. hate in those beat-em-ups. But it was like a year and some change later, they added all this stuff into it. It wasn't great, to be honest. Like, the online play didn't play super great, from what I remember. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they're bringing it back today, I'm assuming they would have that all ironed out. Because, again, this isn't a remake, like we were talking about earlier. This is a literal re-release. It's the exact same game. They're just making it available. And the reason why that's more significant in this case is because that game was literally removed from stores prior to this. You couldn't Can't even get buy it. it. Yeah. Mm, couldn't get it anywhere. I, I was thinking someone would have it on like Steam or something. Nope. Nah, Nowhere. Because I'd have totally rebought have it. To get a legal copy or something like that. <laughs> but um I'm be throwing down some money on this one. Say yes, that much. I'm, I'm copying uh, this. This is gonna be dope. I listened to the uh, Anamana Gucci you, you soundtrack know. for it uh, as soon as <laughs> as soon as that uh, news came out because God, God, that franchise is so good. The music is good. The art <laughs> is good. The gameplay is great. Yeah. But I, I did hear some people um, saying that uh, River City Girls actually improves on a lot of what Scott Program did in that genre, and I've yet to play that game. Oh, really? It's been on my list for a while. I think I should probably check it out. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Um, I've been hearing about that too. I was going to say, you know, if if you guys don't know who Scott Pilgrim is or what the story is about, without going into much detail, Scott, what Scott Pilgrim means to me is it is a love letter to nerds and gamers of our generation. 
that's how I really feel like it is. Um, and and this game is just an appendage to that. Um, and 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 it, I won't, I don't even want to say just an appendage. It's also um, it, it it goes hand in hand with what we know and love. Uh, you know, they have little Mario elements. They have little Zelda elements that you've seen in the movie, in the books, and now you're going to see again in the games. Um, it, it's going to be fun. It's, it's going to be that classic fun that that we all knew and love. It's it's a nostalgic. It's a nostalgic reach that's not predatorial. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's something that we've been asking for, and they obliged. So good yes. on them yeah. for this. Thank you. So we we're super hyped about that. Now, something I didn't think I was gonna be hyped about, um, and I'm more than I, I, I originally thought. Writers Republic, right? This is like, this is like an extreme sports, MMO kind of party game. I'm, I'm still trying to get a grasp on exactly what it is, but it looks good. Um, from the conference, we saw in-game footage, um, and. I mean, obviously, they're going to have the best that they can up there. But uh, you have people going from bikes to these hover like the wings. Wingsuits and... Yeah, to like snowboards, to all kinds of craziness all over this huge terrain. Um, and while there's not a whole bunch of details about exactly what the game is, uh, they did specify like, yo, it's going to be you and your friends doing the craziest, sickest tricks you can think of. Um, and I'm excited to see that. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, the variations in the characters look super cool. And you know me, I'm all about my customization. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I definitely look for that. And, um, I, I can't wait to hear more news on this game because I didn't expect an extreme sports game to be on my radar. And here we are. You know what I mean? Like, it's really, the thing that really stood out to me is like the number of players they seem to be having on these courses like it like we at first we thought it was like some sort of battle royale like a downhill jam battle royale yeah. which also sounded fun <laughs> and i wouldn't be surprised if that's a mode that's in there but like it's like yeah. I, it looked like 50 60 characters on bikes all going downhill some or or maybe all flying down in wingsuits or snowboards whatever like it it looks like wild fun and i can definitely really get behind good. that kind of thing and I, and one of I, the, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, you go, Boo. Uh, one of the, the cool things I noticed about it, too, they were showing a lot of the intricacies of these extreme sports. For example, um, downhill, downhill, <laughs> downhill biking. <laughs> um, it's not just, you know, let's see where gravity takes me. Sometimes you got to stop on some rocks and hop from this, hop to that, hop to that. And they were saying, like, you don't understand how technical this is right now. That's what they said, you know, and I'm sure we're going to learn. Um, buy more information and actually playing the game how much strategy is actually going to go into this instead of just holding down forward and praying for the best so uh yeah mr gamer you want to say something uh no i you you kind of already said what i was going to say about <laughs> yep that was it <laughs> all right <laughs> so yeah ubisoft definitely dropped some pretty exciting titles for it um and uh let's see let's see what they uh how they actually unload you know what i mean right uh, so we're gonna close that topic off. Our final topic, uh, big news. Finally, we've been waiting for this. Yeah, <laughs> the price of the Xbox Series S was finally revealed, along with the actual box, which then Microsoft confirmed. <laughs> so the 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 information got out there, and then Microsoft said, "All right, here it is." Three ninety nine. I'm sorry, two ninety nine for the Series S. So three hundred dollars. Um, and then the Series X price got confirmed, four ninety nine, five hundred dollars for the X. Those are good price tags, man. Three hundred dollars for a next gen console. Okay. I, okay. Okay. You can't just say next gen console because that's not say just this. what you're you're not just getting that anymore. Getting and that's what box. I that is what <laughs> I that is what I love about the, the it's it is arguably the best deal in gaming right now. It just is. I'm sorry to rip off Todd Howard's words, but I'm sorry, sir. It just works. 
It does. <laughs> Like, this really does just make sense because I, I and and I'm, I'm sorry, Sigma. You you sorry. Go. No, no, no. You're you're fine. <laughs> I was just gonna say because we we were speculating that 500 was probably gonna be what the Series X hit. That maybe mm-hmm. they were waiting for Sony to say something and that they would maybe at the last second be like, you know what? Maybe we can Let go for cut. four, <laughs> four hundred. But this leak kind of forced their hand. But honestly, I I don't think. Sony can go as low as three hundred dollars because Sony also has two versions. They have their all digital, yeah. and then they have their one with the disc drive. That's literally the only difference between Sony's two boxes: the disc drive. You can't knock two hundred dollars off of a console for just the disc drive, can you? <laughs> well, I yo. So what happens when mm-hmm. when the digital PS Five drops for one ninety nine? I don't think Sony can do that. Like that would be insane. <laughs> that would be. I lose my mind. Lose <laughs> that my would mind. be insane. Instantly. <laughs> but I, I don't think Sony can swing that. Like they were talking about a uh, premium pricing, uh, for their next console. Period. So it was probably going to be higher than the last one, which was four hundred at launch, right? So if they were eyeing five hundred, possibly six hundred, which I think they still want to stay away from because of the backlash with the PS3. If they're eyeing five hundred dollars, then their digital edition could not foot the bill for a three hundred dollar variant. It would have to be four for that one. Mm, yeah, yeah. In which case, Microsoft. And honestly, let's 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 look at the difference between the the two Xboxes right now, because unlike Sony, there are some hardware differences between the S and the there X. There are right. Yeah, they have the same CPU. Uh, they have the same ray tracing ability. But they have different. They have the same kind of SSD, but they have different uh, gigs. Storage. Yeah, storage. different amounts of storage. Yeah, five, yeah, five twelve and a terabyte. They have different amounts of internal RAM, which makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm trying to think what what else was noticeable. Oh, they uh, the S does not do true native 4K. It upscales from 1440p. So again, that's right. something if you care about resolution. Like if you're like a resolution hound, if you have a 4K TV in the house. But if you're not, if that's not a big deal to you, this is a, a very good price for an entry-level console that, again, like Blue mentioned, it can stream a lot of what you need. So you don't actually have to save, uh, you know, games on it or run games on the actual box. And if you do want to download games, it'll run them in 1440p, which is higher than 1080, but, you know, it's not true 4K. Like, if that's all you need, if it's the second console, you're straight. And if I may, there is one other thing that at least we have not confirmed you can do with the PS5. Storage space on your Xbox Series S and X is expandable. Mm. I, I do think Sony it, has, I don't, has a way to do it. I don't, I don't know if they've revealed it. Oh Yeah, like I said, I just don't know if Sony has said, yes, our hard drive space is expandable, but just based purely off of the digital-only version, the fact that you... As your own person can expand that, yeah. Come on. <laughs> there is a caveat to that because you're gonna you're gonna need Microsoft's um, proprietary uh, solid state drive for that to work properly. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the speed that you get in the and, box. And do you know who makes those? Microsoft. <laughs> you can also use Seagate drives. Really? Oh, really? I thought yes. I thought it was a custom thing. The internal is custom, but as far as your expandable storage space, I do not believe that that has to, that falls under the same um, restrictions. Restrictions. Thank you. Well, we're okay. definitely going to do some research. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll that's something that. to confirm. Yeah, but um, on on yeah, top man. of the fantastic deal that the uh, <laughs> boxes have at this price, they're also introducing. Well, they're not introducing because it's been a thing before. But they're letting you know what's available to you is the Xbox All Access plans. Before we talk about this, I did have a question about the Series S. Okay, there's a big old speaker on the side. <laughs> Why? I don't think that's actually a speaker. I think that's just a grill for. Yeah, venting. I, I really don't. I, I don't. It does look like a speaker, though. <laughs> <laughs> look like a straight speaker, bro. What if they just did throw like, like a little stupid speaker own. inside of that? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was a little jarring to see that. I was like, why is it so dark? Like the whole thing looked nice and sleek and just 
slap the dang. Well, let's talk about the design a little bit then before we go into the all access yeah. stuff. Because uh, yeah. Xbox is, is saying that it's the smallest console ever. <laughs> like, it's 60% it smaller really than small. the Series X. Like, they, they have all the shots that, and I'll probably maybe put one up uh, on the video once we edit it, but like, they have the little diagram Next that shows it inside of the other one. And it's significantly smaller. It really is. Like super um, compact, something you can throw in a, a handbag or like a duffel bag and, or book bag and take over to your friend's house if you need. Like that, That's appealing to some folks because apparently the Series X is quite big. <laughs> yeah, right? You, the Series <laughs> I mean, S ne- yep. on, on some of these pictures next to a controller is only about like two controllers long. So if you, know, you kind of look at this. Actually, do I have another controller right here? Let's say this. Boom. It's only like this long. Right? That's that's small. Yeah. That's like nothing. And it's not much like thicker than that either. Yeah. It was like. So I mean that's um, cool. That, yeah. But it definitely looked like a dang speaker on the side, man. Like, what is that? <laughs> I don't like it. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Like honestly, at first <laughs> glance, yeah, I thought that was also a little jarring, but after looking at it for more time, I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm fine with it. I think I think I like the design better than the Series X. You know what? This is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's a nice contrast, like the the stark white and then like the the black circle on it. I, it stands out, like you know what that is at first glance. Like, because if it was all white, okay. then it could probably be anything. Like it could be like a shoebox for all <laughs> for all you know. Uh, yeah. I mean, my Xbox One right now is all white and it looks nice. It kind of fits the decor of what I got going around, you know. But this black dot is gonna man, it's gonna mess up my feng shui, but it's it's all right. <laughs> I think you'll be okay, good sir. <laughs> I think I will too. You know what I'm saying? We just drink a whole bunch of water, wash our hands. And... <laughs> but uh the all access plan that we were going into, uh, apparently yeah, for the S, series S you can sign up and pay $25 per month for over the course of 24 months. So it's a two-year plan, similar to like what they do with cell phones nowadays. No money down, so you don't have to put up like a down payment. I do think you open up a line of credit with a particular company. Like uh, I don't remember what the, the company is, but it's who works behind the scenes with Microsoft to basically handle the loan that you're essentially getting. Because you're getting the equipment, right. and then you're paying off that loan. So... For the X, that only goes up to $35. And mind you, this includes Game Pass Ultimate. So, so the $15 a month service. The, you're getting <laughs> your games. Right. So you're, And the thing is, some people were saying that, the, that after 24 months, paying $25 comes up to like $600, which is twice the price of the the series s if you were to just buy it outright that's not entirely true because you're not just buying the hardware you're getting two you years of that those services yeah and we'll go over to our next announcement they just added ea play formerly ea access to game pass so this holiday season a lot. everything that's in the ea access now called ea play library is included in Game Pass for no additional cost. That's not an extra five bucks. It's not nothing. It's just part of the ultimate subscription. All of that, plus the new, the next gen console for twenty five or thirty five dollars per month. And after the two years, it's your console. I know I sound like a salesman right now, <laughs> but, <laughs> but this deal is like this is a little mind blowing. This is like I'm sitting here. The last time we talked about these consoles back and forth. We at, we both told Gamer, you know what, the PS5 is probably what I would get first because I wouldn't yeah. need a Series X since I have a decent PC and the games that they have will be over there. There's no reason for me not to get a Series X. But I also want to remember that when we discussed this, we had all said it's going to it's going to have to come down to what they're going to what else are they going to be giving us because games and consoles right now are almost indistinguishable it, it doesn't matter at this point it has mm-hmm. to be what else you give us as consumers that's going to bring us in you were on ps5 the first time and then microsoft was like so i heard you like deals <laughs> <laughs> and then that's what they did 
and like, it's because they have the they they have the money and the power to do this. They are just that large. Like you're already you're already looking at this on our operating system. Why not play our games on this? Like it's a very very compelling argument to get one of the consoles, which is something that we were saying was lacking from all of their news prior. Like we love the services they're dishing out. We love, you know, the consumer friendly, you know, ideas and deals and and the ecosystem. But to just mm-hmm. shell out this money for a console just doesn't really seem all that necessary. And it went like, you know what? It's only 35 bucks a month. It's only 25 bucks a month. Why not? If you even if you were even if you were a hardcore dead set PS5 owner, you're going to spend the 500 bucks or 600, 400, whatever that comes out to be anyway. If you love games, you're going to get an S as your secondary console. So as far as Microsoft's concerned, that's a console sold. You're also in the ecosystem. Exactly. Exactly. Come in and come in and play with us. See everything that we got around here. Like exact, it's exactly it's what they were saying. Um, I'm sorry, but go ahead. No, no, sorry. It's to kind of highlight you know, the last point you brought up about EA Play being added to Game Pass. I wanted to just kind of tell you guys and tell the viewers some of the games that are included right now with ea play um that are of note right now rocket arena is kind of on the rise that's on there need for speed um heat uh madden 20 now we're not fans of everything well but, but it's there that's, a, that's a big market like <laughs> the yeah, people, no. <laughs> people the madden people like that's a big market yeah battlefield 5 uh anthem uh you know a way out <laughs> burnout paradise uh, star wars battlefronts 2 mass effect there's a lot of games that are just going to be now available oh yeah and the dragon the age true. series is ea that's uh, true yeah titanfall apex legend not that apex legends cost you money anyway <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah uh ea has a lot of franchise under the belt and i know people like to hate on ea but that doesn't mean that they don't make quality games Every now and then, That's like true. they also have, they also have a legacy library of a lot of, of some of the best games ever made. Like Dead Space is in their wheelhouse. Uh, the previous Mass the Effects, Sims. like Blue mentioned, The Sims Sim is in their wheelhouse. Crisis, uh, Dead Space. You know what I mean? There's all a lot of really good games that are coming onto this. So it's not just oh, two decent games coming out of EA. Some ones that are going, you don't spend time on. That's going to be included with this just for signing up. Right, like the, the thing, the thing is, remember when Microsoft first started doing this and seeking to be like you know this kind of Netflix style gaming hub, a yeah. lot of other companies went, "I want to do that too," which is what also happened when Netflix got popular. Like, and then they make their own little mm-hmm. service, and they make their, like I think Ubisoft has one that they launched not too long ago. EA had the one that they yeah. launched not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Microsoft is slowly consolidating them back. What if Microsoft? goes after I don't know how this deal came about with EA but what if they go to Ubisoft and say hey whatever you were doing over there roll it in just roll it in you know you want to <laughs> <laughs> like what's to stop I, them from, from chasing okay. that down is that going to be completely uh, though it's going though it probably sounds like it's going to be an amazing deal for us you had previously mentioned how important it is to have competition so, okay well, right now, but okay, go ahead. Finish, finish your point, because <laughs> I I I grow a little concerned when I think when 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 I see it's like oh yeah, just come in here and then come in here and then come in here and then come in here, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I I, I get concerned when I think of how big because though it again I feel like it could be an amazing deal for us. But at what point is it going to be a problem? At what point, what point is it going to get too big? The only, be the only deal. deal the only deal. And that's where I'm like, eh, uh-uh. See, it is. I, I, I get where you're coming from. But this is, this, is more, this is more granular than that. Because, yes, those companies are putting their different stuff on the same platform. But they're not necessarily becoming one company. Do you know what I mean? Like you're just well, getting the content in uh, one place. Uh, okay. Like the the competition comes from because if if Microsoft can secure kind of a a a grouping of content that big on just their platform, 
then the competition comes from Sony and Nintendo because they have not done anything to that effect yet. Sony is trying a little bit, like they're dipping their toe in it with PlayStation Now, but Nintendo's version has been, you know, the Nintendo Online Shop, which is like SNES games and NES games in the catalog, which is not really doing anything anywhere close. No. no so if it, it becomes that overwhelming on Microsoft's side, that's when you get Sony and Nintendo having to step up. And that's what I want to see. Okay. 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 No, that so makes you sense. want to create a monster for them to take down. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, and, and, and that kind of stuff comes from, because right now Sony was the monster. They had all the say in terms of market share for consoles, right? So Sony mm-hmm. was dictating how everything went for the most part. And if Microsoft doesn't start to get a footing, and it looks like with the kind of deals that they're offering, I don't see how they don't at least start to eat at Sony's fan base. Because even if you buy a Sony console, right. like I can't imagine you wouldn't also just get an Xbox because the deal is too good. Like yeah. I, some people just hate Xbox. That there's nothing you can do about that. But if you're yeah. like the kind of person uh, who loves video games and you're like Sony has been doing everything I want for the past couple of days, at some point you're gonna weigh the pros and cons and be like, well. Microsoft has all of these games that I like playing on their service for, you know, all this stuff included. Like, I'd be an idiot to not get in on that. Even if I want my Sony exclusives, I'll still have my console, but I got to get this as well. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a hard thing to argue down the merits of what Microsoft is offering in terms of a deal. Just point blank, period. If you love video games, you need an Xbox. I mean... <laughs> So somebody, somebody, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's heavy, but I understand, man. And 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 you, I think you said it right. If you love video games, there's some people who are casual gamers and they don't this is need true. an Xbox. You know, I, my my younger brother, he only plays his PlayStation because he just likes Spider Man, and this, that's all he wants to do. Um, and, you know, the, a couple other games that he plays, Apex, he's got it there. He's not super interested in a lot of the other games that I play. Um, PlayStation works for him. Yeah, he definitely um, wouldn't need no. to invest in any of this stuff because he's, you know, no. happy. And 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 there's there's lots of people out there, but just like what you said, for people who love video games, for video game enthusiasts, it is very hard to turn down this. Like, if, if, it's very hard. If you're trying to poke holes in this, you... You're like, a Sony I, pony. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like love how that's just caught. I I love it. <laughs> like it, it, as much as you love Sony, like why would you actively hurt yourself <laughs> by the saying that you're not going to do a thing that's going to help you, like help you play more games, help you save money? Like honestly, buy term- if you like Sony, if you love Sony, buy into this Microsoft stuff and make Sony be better because <laughs> it's gonna help you <laughs> at the end of the day. You know what? I, 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 if there are any parents who are listening to this podcast, I would like for you to think about it this way: if you are thinking about getting something for your your son or your daughter or whomever, and you were un- and the only thing that you had was just that, I know that such and such really likes these games. The only thing that you have to worry about getting them is that box that's it that is it Done. you there is no extra games you don't have to worry about because 75 percent of what your average gamer will probably want to play is already on game pass so the only thing you have to worry about is i want that box you don't have to worry about oh and then get this and then this it's like no that box the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that's mm-hmm. all you got to do. Get that, have them plug it up. No, no, no worry about downloading or everything because everything's going to be streamed anyway. So then you get to jump right in. Wow, I sound like sick. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, just, like, no, I'm sounding like describing I'm, I'm sounding what the like deal Sigma is. As I, sounds yeah. like you're selling it to people because it's that good it's exciting like saving yeah. money getting value for like what you put your time and yeah. effort into like that's exciting so, it is because well, I, I, I just so because like i'm already going to be getting the x but i'm just like man i think i could really sell an s to somebody <laughs> like, to. Bam, like <laughs> why not do it the game the the, <laughs> the the term i've been using recently is poly gamerous right and i feel like Poly, <laughs> when you're poly gamerous on a shirt, I, I don't want poly gamerous. Super dope. 
Yes. You heard it here. I'm poly gamers, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of people, I think they listen to our podcast and like, oh, these are just some, some Microsoft hounds, you know, some, some Xbox fanboys. And I would say that you're only half right because we are game lovers in general. And right now, just like Sig said, for game lovers, this is the best deal. So we are going to hype that up. But we are poly gamers. If PlayStation comes out with something better, you call me a Sony Pony you. too. You, you, bet, you bet we'll be. You right, yeah, me, me and Blue, me and Blue were on the PS5 hype train after their conference. Like we were, we were ready to put money down. Yeah. Spider Man Miles Morales looks amazing. Yeah, but over time, and, Xbox shot back, and I feel like this was a salvo that they desperately needed. Because I was like, I, I like the stuff that they do. I'm gonna play their stuff, but I don't need to play it right now. But yeah. now I don't have to worry about that because this deal is too good. Right? Because yep. here's the thing. Because I have my Xbox One X, so it's like okay. Everything, everything that's on that right now will be able to be played on my Xbox Series X. So I don't even need that anymore. So that's perfect. So, you know, like, I don't have to worry about that. But again, if if it turns out that uh, Nintendo or Nintendo or Sony was like, okay, then we see your deal. Bet Nintendo All Access Pass. Our entire library is now available stream oh, directly to your Ooh. Nintendo Switch. How quickly? How quickly would we be throwing our wallets? How quickly will we be inputting that credit card information? Right. If you tell me every single ROM that has been on the NES and SNES, I can stream, not download, stream to my Switch? Yes. That would be amazing. And I would totally be singing the praises of an idea like that. But historically, Nintendo hasn't been yeah, that consumer friendly. Not, yeah. No. So yeah. I don't know. Like other companies <laughs> eating their lunch is how you get Nintendo's these so companies bullies. to turn around. Right, Nintendo low key some bullies. <laughs> kind they be homeless by the nostalgia like crazy. They they follow the Apple doctrine. But I do want to also hurts. add <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. <laughs> oh man! But I do want to say, um, now that we finally have some information, solid information about the next gen, like what the console looks like, the price, the release date, November tenth, which we didn't mention yet. November tenth is when these boxes all release. Yeah. Now, Sony has a showcase coming up September 16th. <laughs> you guys think we get the price next, next week, week from Sony? We excited. We excited. There's Do you think we get the price? They're gonna drop they the have price. to tell us the price. They have they to. They have to. Why, why, are they going to wait till October? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. October, I don't right? know. If they don't tell us the price, it's going to be monumentally different disappointing <laughs> and i feel like it's gonna weaken sony's stance in this in this in, kind of in this cold whole debate. war right now yeah, cold war. exactly <laughs> you know? i mean i mean they got what they wanted microsoft blinked first so they have the opportunity yeah. to do something we don't know what like i i i can't imagine it maybe they will but i can't imagine they can undercut at least not the price of the s I think Microsoft knows that. That's why they said two ninety nine. <laughs> Kinda, right. yeah. They went like, you know what? <laughs> At this point, I it's three hundred dollars. Your move, like yeah. exactly your yeah. move. Yes, that's your move. Heard. Your move. Now, honestly, I think that lake that like that leak was planned. <laughs> it's possible, but that, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, just like you you said, it's your move now, Sony. Let's see what their move is on the 16th. I'm super excited about it. I don't doubt, I don't think that it's going to be a bad conference or showing. I'm just excited to see what it's going to be. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I mean, just want that. I just want that price. Because the moment that the moment that that price hits, it is going to be what happened. It's going to be telling of what sales are going to be happening this holiday season. Because bro, it's going to be crazy. Because it's because it's going to either be you release because we we can all agree Sony does not have the same services that Microsoft can offer. They don't. Their infrastructure is unfortunately really different in that regard. So with that being said, I personally don't know what Sony could add to the PS5 already aside from PlayStation Now or whatever. Maybe something they haven't come out with yet. But if it's not meeting two ninety nine, like it's a hard sell. 
Ah, it's like, a hard sell if it's not two ninety nine. Like if if if, 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 exactly. version, if Sony does that for the digital version, like I think they're pay they'd probably be paying you for the consoles you buy. Like that's how that's how much money I feel <laughs> like they'd be losing <laughs> for each console sale. Like I don't think they can swing it, man. I don't either. I, unless unless they just like unless it's like the super Trump hard. We are saving the absolute best. For last, I love upsets, man. That's what I want. <laughs> like, I, I don't. But like, it, I, I can any any one of you. Like, what possibly uh, aside from two ninety nine? Like, aside from two ninety nine, what could they upset with? Like, what could they truly upset with if it's not going to be two ninety nine? It would. It would have uh, to be. No, oh, go ahead. I think we're about a to say working something. Game Pass clone. Yeah, it would have to be a working a Game literal Pass literal copy yep. of Game Pass. They would also have to say, "Hey, you know what? We were on that same phone call with EA, and that's also included in our stuff. So come on over and get all this stuff." So it's basically Fun. if they do exactly that. the same thing as Microsoft Game Pass, except instead of Xbox exclusives, it's Sony exclusives tied to that. That's already a better value because. Everyone considers Sony's uh, first-party stuff to be of higher quality. Yeah. So that's, that's the that only happened. way. And I think Sony doesn't want to do that because of how high ranking they think their stuff is. They don't want to put it on a store where it's essentially free. They don't want to do that. They're like, this This is the, the cream of the crop. They're like Nintendo in that way where they're like, I don't care if this game came out three years ago. It's still $60. <laughs> 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 like, that's how much wow. they value their IP. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't see it. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll just have to wait. So yep. On that note, uh, that brings this podcast to a close. We don't have any questions in the mailbag this week, so definitely send your questions to bbetgaming at gmail dot right. We'll answer your questions, your concerns. If you want to tell us fun <laughs> stories or you have stuff that's outside the world of gaming that you want to ask us about, feel free. We will uh, oblige. But. But that being said, I want to thank everybody for listening. Gamer, where can people find you? Is they're looking for you on the internet. So, if you are looking for me on the internet, you can find me at startbuttonreview.com. That is startbuttonreview, like on the controller, dot com. I am also S-B-R-M-R-G-A-M-E-R on almost all social media platforms at this point. There is an underscore on Twitch and Instagram. And I also have my podcast, SBR Reports, um, that goes up uh, every Friday and is now playing on your right pinky toe and Skyrim toilets. Oh. There just needs to be an update. Okay, oh. gotcha. I'll, I'll check for that. <laughs> uh, Blue, how about you? Where can people find you if they're looking for you on the internet? It's your boy, Blue Bones, B-L-U-B, zero N-E-S, spell it just like that. In any search bar, you'll find me. Um, yeah, check the Discord. You know what I mean? We just we're doing some uh maintenance right now, a little overhaul. It's gonna be dope. It, it already is dope. But, you know, we just make <laughs> it's it already better. dope. It's doper. It's gonna be doper. It's, it's doper. Yes, you know the, I mean? the dopeness has increased. Yeah. Um there's been an influx in dopeness in our Discord, so definitely come check it out. Um check out our, our Twitch, you know what I mean? We're we you, if you've been watching this week, you're seeing some more new faces. Uh, we saw Tiger Nado this week. We saw Uncle Fall. We saw the Kalamazoo. We saw Night Shadow. We've seen a lot more of the BBT squad on that channel. Come through, check them out. You know, if we're not your cup of tea, they might be. So definitely come check it out. Uh, last but not least, Mr. Sigma, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on pretty much all social media at Sigma Gears Nine. You can find me on Facebook at Sigma and Son. You can find my three-minute reviews uh, as well as multiple streams that I'm involved in on the Escapist Magazine website and specifically their YouTube channel and Twitch. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, most recent review, Hot Shot Racing. Check that out. Uh, trying to think of anything else to plug. <laughs> I think um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So All once right. again, Yay. thanks to my two co-hosts. Jeff will be back next week, I presume. Uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks everyone for listening, everyone for watching. Episode sixty-two is that's done. It. Peace. Picture me riding and rolling, rolling with models, brand new Ferraris like we was winning the lottery.
mulatto and that's not no spot is with me Pouring the bottle, playing that ONG music that's gonna blow like Chicago hair.